This morning I have a simple message in my heart that I want to share. And I hope it's not too long. But I hope that the theme of it will continue on in your heart. Amen. You know, it's not really how long the sermon is. It's whether or not it has an impact upon your heart. Amen. You can speak five minutes by the unction of the Lord and say more than you could if you spoke two hours. Amen. Come on. Without it. It's always been my wish, my heart's desire as a preacher to speak whatever the Lord, whatever His words are to us. Because it is His words alone only that strengthen us, that confirms us, that establishes us, that gives us hope, that brings faith. I was reading Thessalonians. Tell you what, Thessalonians, the, the, the Thessalonian people were a prime example in Scripture of a people who had been converted from paganism to Christ. And what a testimony that they had a witness to the world of their faith, of their conversion, of their newfound life in Christ. Amen. It's not that they found religion, it's that they found the, they found the right one. Yes. Amen. Amen. They found the right one. And what a difference it made in those times Thessalonia, Thessalonica, as it's called in Scripture, Thessalonica, was a city located there in the, I believe in the southern parts of, of Greece. It was right on the main east and west highways of the Roman Empire. If you went west from Thessalonia, Nica, you went to the Western Empire, to Italy and, on, and further on. To the east was... Jerusalem, Israel, uh, Turkey, all the countries that are, that are eastward. So Thessalonica was a very uh, located in a very central place that was uh, that was uh, the spirit of the Lord had led Paul and Silas there, and it was the perfect place for them to go. Yes. For it was from there that the word of God began to expand westward to the regions beyond. But when Paul had gone there preaching the Word of God, like all citizens of the country at that time were steeped in idol worship, which was the main part of life at that time. But to see how that a people who knew nothing about the true God yes. and the worship of the true God to suddenly receive the Word of Christ and embrace it wholeheartedly. To come out of darkness, the darkness of paganism. Now you think about it. Here in America, we think of darkness, we think of people that go out and get drunk every night and run around the wild or get, get do drugs and blah, blah, blah. But we're talking about people who knew nothing about nothing of the truth of God. Totally in darkness, in ignorance, the worship of idols, and all sorts of superstitious ways. Mixed in with All kinds of fleshly and carnal acts. But for this people to reach out and to hear the Word of God and to embrace it 
with all of their heart and they accept it. Paul realized how powerful the Word of God is. Sometimes we, sometime we stand up and testify in church and we talk about if God can save a sinner like me, He can save anybody. This was, I believe, the testimony of the Thessalonians. If Jesus Christ can be real to us, He can be real to the whole world. Hallelujah! If God can come into a city steeped in paganism, in darkness, where there was never light, and come in with His great light and shine in the hearts of men and change their lives and make new creatures out of them, God can do it to anybody. Amen. What a testimony they had. And Paul writes to them, I believe he was at Corinth at the time that he wrote the letter to the Thessalonians. And he, and he wrote to them, you've read the, you've read the, you've read the two letters. But I just want to read a few verses to you as I skip through this book, this first book. He writes to them, telling them that He remembers them in His prayers and their work of faith and labor of love. And their patience of hope in the Lord Jesus in the sight of God and our Father. What a conversion they had. It would be like going into, it, it would be like going into a city in Mecca itself. The capital of Islam, you might call it. Yes, amen. The very center of Islam today. It'd be like going into Mecca and seeing the whole town converted to Jesus Christ. What a testimony they would have in the world. Lord, yes. Oh, glory to God. And here, like a shining hill, a city on a hill, the Thessalonians stand forth, stand up, and proclaim Jesus Christ as Savior in their life Amen. to a lost and darkened world. What an example they were. And Paul was so proud. He was so, he was so joyous at what God had done. Amen. That the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ can, can praise God, it can drive out the darkness anywhere in the world. No matter how dark it is, the light of Jesus Christ can out. And when he sees these people, he realizes how powerful, how wonderful, how great Jesus Christ is. Amen. Not only did he meet Jesus himself on the road to Damascus, not only did Paul experience a life change in himself, but he knew about God. He was raised in the Jewish religion. He knew that Jehovah God is the true and living God. Amen. When he learned about Jesus, Changed his life. He was. He gave up all that he thought that he knew. He counted it as dregs, as dung, as nothing that he might win Christ. Amen. For as Bill was preaching this morning, God has revealed everything that He is in Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ has become now the pinnacle. He has become the light of the world. And Paul is seeing how great this light is. For him to come into Thessalonica and change the hearts and lives of those men and women. Amen. For worshiping of idols. Can you imagine worshiping of idols? Going to the temples. Having all kinds of carnal pleasures in the flesh and the body. Which is part of the experience of their worship to their gods. For Jesus Christ to come in. And this is what Paul said right here. Knowing, brother and beloved, your election of God. Yes. For he could see by their conversion, by their salvation, that God had chosen them yes. to come in. Amen. Let me tell you something. 
When it looks like things may be dark and dreary and hopeless. When you see somebody's life that you know, that you look at them and say it's just hopeless for them. They'll never know. They'll never understand. They'll, never, they'll just never come to the Lord. I just don't see how. It's just impossible. Let me tell you something. When you begin to say that, then you don't understand the power of God. When we say things like that, we have forgotten the power and the, and the might of the Word and the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. For it is only then and there that we really begin to understand and see just how great and powerful He really is. Amen. Right. Amen. Take a look at your own life. Where did you come from? How were you before the Lord came into your life? He changed you, didn't He? Yes, He did. He made something new out of you. Out of me. Praise God. Hallelujah. If He can do that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Why couldn't He do it for somebody else? If He can cause you to be saved, He can cause you to see the light. If He can cause you to understand. If He can bring, if He can bring peace and understanding into your heart and mind of who you are and what, who He is and what Christ has done, why couldn't He do it for anybody? But this is what He said in verse five: For our gospel came not unto you in word only but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. If there's anything that people need today of the testimony of Christians is much assurance. Are you sure what you're telling me? Are you sure of what this is? But here Paul is saying that God has come to you the Word of Christ has come to you and God has given you great assurance Amen. so that you really don't need anybody to tell you because God has made you to know Himself. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah! Because you see the life-changing power of Jesus Christ in your own lives. Amen. Why is it that you no longer want to go down to the temple? Why is it that you no longer want to go down and join with the rest of your friends in the worship of some idol? Because Jesus Christ has come and now you see the light and the sweetness and the glory and the power and the majesty of the only living true God that there is. Amen. Amen. For all these idols are but dead, dead idols. There's not, there's not any idols. It's, there's no gods that are real gods. There's only one true God. Amen. Right. Sometimes we make gods out of things in life. <laughs> We don't realize that we're doing that, but sometimes things in life that can become a God to us. And we think more about that than we do the Lord. Mm -hmm. We have more respect. We, have, we give more time for other things than we do the Lord. Mm -hmm. But when the Lord becomes so real to us, there's nothing there's nothing in this world that can ever take His place. Not in our hearts. Not in our minds. Not in our lives. He becomes preeminent. He becomes predominant. He becomes Lord yes. of our life. Amen. Hallelujah. And when I see my own life and I see myself and that's not happening, it's not His fault. It's my fault. When I see myself not following Him as I should, I say, Lord, and He says, I'm right here. When I fail Him and when I go the wrong way, I say, Lord, and He says, I'm right here. I've never left you. I'll never forsake you. I'm right here. Turn around and come to me. Let go of these things and hold my hand. Hallelujah! Don't set your heart upon the world around you. Don't make things a God of this world. But let me be your God fully, completely, and holy. I want to be your Lord of all of your life. Of your thoughts, of your heart, your mind, your soul, your body, everything that concerns you. I, I am the Lord of your life. Hallelujah. 
He says, the gospel came not unto you in word only. It didn't just come in words, but it was in power in the Holy Ghost. In Corinthians, I believe he says over in 1 Corinthians, he says about the same thing. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Hallelujah. But he said, he said in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, I believe the second chapter. <clears throat> my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Yes. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. He's saying the same yes. thing. The word of Christ came to you not just in word, not just empty words. Yeah. I'm not just another philosopher, a wise man come into your town teaching some kind of new philosophy. But indeed, what I preach to you is the word of God. Yeah. Because it's with power and demonstration of the Spirit. Yes. God demonstrates to our hearts. He demonstrates to our life. He demonstrates to the whole world the truth of who He is. Amen. Somebody says there is no God. If there's no God, take a look at what God has done in the lives of individuals and in, in, in their lives. Take a look at what God's done in their life. Amen. Look how God's changed people's lives. Look how He's changed, He's changed towns. He's changed uh, cities. He's changed country. He's changed the whole world. Jesus Christ, the power of Him has changed everything in this world. Yes, Lord. Amen. Even though the devil still rampages and he's still out there deceiving, the people are being deceived. What would the world be today without that little baby born in Bethlehem? What would we be? I can bring you good tidings of great joy. Amen. Shall be to all people. Yes. Hallelujah. Somebody say all people. All, all people. people. Run to you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior. Amen. Which is Christ the Lord. Brother, I'll tell you something. God means business. I say God means business. When God doesn't work, he does it. But this God's not in this thing just play around. He really, now God is very patient with us. He's very patient with the world. He's very patient with everybody. Sometimes it takes a long time. It seems like a long, long time for God to finally do something. But that's only because that's how we view it. Amen. That's how we view it. That's, how, that's not, how, that's not what, how He sees it. That's how we see it. Amen. God is sure taking a long time. And the Lord said, what's time? Time ain't nothing with me. Right. It's time with you. Amen. So God deals with us in our own time. God deals with us where we are. But with God, time is nothing. Amen. He's eternal. Yeah, right. If He spent a whole lifetime dealing with somebody to bring Him in, that'd be all right. Amen. Amen. Better late than never. <laughs> Better to come in if you're sick and old and die and be lost and die and go to hell. I want, I want to know if the Lord is working in my life. I'm grateful that He is. Amen. I'm grateful that when Jesus came, He came not, not in vain. But what He did, He accomplished. What He came to do, He accomplished. What God intends to do, God accomplishes. So, praise God. People, people are not that way with the Lord. People are not that way with the Lord. But the Lord means business. He's serious. And He's sincere. And when the Lord determines to do something, He will do it. Hallelujah. He will do it. And if He didn't, we'd all be lost. We'd all be lost. This church wouldn't be here. These doors wouldn't be open. You wouldn't be here praising God. But because He did a work in your life. Hallelujah. Because the Word of God came to us not just words only. You know, there's much to say about teaching. 
There's much to say about preaching. And we need it. I'll never put down the idea that we need good teaching or that we need good preaching. That we, we need to learn the Word of God. But the Word of God is not just something that we learn mentally. They're not, it's not just words that we gather up in our, in our minds and store in the, in the computer of our minds and, and, and in remembrance and, and remember words from the Bible. And we can quote it. But the Word of God is a living Word. Which means it's more than just words. It's reality. It's an experience with God. When we read about His love, as you read it, that, those words are full of power. They have meaning. And when you experience that love, and you know what you read. Many people have read the Bible over and over and over. It means nothing to them. It's empty words. But when they come in contact with the one who wrote it, when they come in contact with the one who gave it, then when they read the word of love, they know what he's talking about. Hallelujah! Say amen! amen. amen. We talk about healing and miracles and faith and all these other things, good things that's in the Bible. They're all there, but they're empty to those who don't know it. Amen. But those who experience it know that it's true and that it's real, that it's not just empty, vain words, but it's a living reality in Christ Jesus. Amen. And this is what happened to the Thessalonians. When just empty words that Paul was talking, he was speaking to them. They became living and real. And suddenly their whole life was changed. The power of the Spirit of God came into their life and changed their life. And they knew that what he was talking about, man, this thing is real. Amen. Jesus Christ is real. Amen. Yes, he is. Amen. Amen. This God that you speak of. For He's in my soul. He's in my life. He's changing my thoughts. He's changing the way I talk. He's changing the way I walk. He's changing the way I think. He's changing where I go. He makes everything new. And I do it with gladness. I'm glad that He's doing this to me. I'm glad I'm not where I used to be. But I'm somewhere new in Christ Jesus. Amen. Brother, if you don't feel that way, you need to get saved. If we not feel that way, we need to get out and get, get back with God again. Because when Jesus is in our lives, in our heart, when He's in control of us, that's yeah. right. Yeah. It makes everything new. Oh, yeah. And we realize, hey, it's good. It's really good. It's good stuff. I want more of it, Lord. Amen. I love you. Oh, God, how great is your love. Oh, Lord, I love you. Just love me more, Lord, because I sure do love you. I just want you to love me more. I want you to love you. And yeah, Lord, I need to love you that much more. Right. Whatever it is you want of me, I'm yours. Whatever it is you want and desire of my life, my life is yours. If we would feel that way, think that way, every day. Brother, you know, we're waiting for, you know, we all talk about some things that's going to happen, things that's going to happen. Just wait around, find good something's going to happen. Brother, it's happening right now. Would you let it? Amen. Hallelujah! Oh. I'm going to wait for some great thing event to take place. It can take place right now! Amen. That's right. Amen. Jesus is alive and real in our hearts. change, it starts right here. Amen. You want your neighbors to do right, it starts right here. You want somebody to know about it? You wish you could tell somebody? It starts right here. Because the more on fire you get with the Lord, the more you're going to tell somebody. Amen. 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 The closer you get to Him, the praise God, the more you're going to open your mouth for Him. Amen. The more you get in love with Him, the more you're going to tell somebody. Hallelujah! The more that you get close to Him, then whatever He tells you to do, that's what you're going to do. And somebody's going to benefit from it. Amen. Amen. Oh, I wish somebody gets saved. I wish somebody knew. I wish they didn't think that 
way. Why don't you get a little closer to God and let Him get a hold of you and just get a hold of your oh, words yes. and your mind and your right. heart and your soul and your spirit and let your words become His word and His heart. Your heart become His heart and maybe that person you're concerned about will begin to understand what you're saying. Yes. Amen. Because right. now it's real to you. Yes. Now you're filled with it. Amen. Now you're flowing with it. Amen. You see, our, our need for Him, our need for Him Amen. is continual. Amen. Just as much as His love to us is continual. Let me say it again. Our need for Him is constant. Just as much as His love to us is constant. Do you need Him? Do you need Jesus today? Brother Bill, do you need Jesus? Amen. Bill, Amen. Matt, all of us, we need the Lord. That's right. And as much as we need Him, that's how much Amen. Now, if He don't love me, I don't need Him. If He don't love me, I don't need Him. Right. But you see, the point is, He does love me. He is. Right. And if He loves me, I need Him. Amen. And the more I need Him, the more He loves me. Yes. And the more He tells me, and the more He gives to me. Hallelujah. Amen. And the emptier I am, the fuller He is for me. Amen. Hallelujah. You understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. The Lord comes not just empty words. Amen. He knows the hunger of every heart. Yes, He knows. He knows the cry of every Amen. man. The only cry in my heart is for Jesus. The only longing that I have is for Him. Lord, crucify my will. Help me die by my death. Hallelujah. And then I know the Lord that is pleasing. This is what the this is what the reality of Christ is. Sometimes we lose sight of it. I lose sight of the reality of Jesus in my life. I let everything else in, in this in my life become so real that I get aggravated by it. I get upset by it. I get overwhelmed by it. You know, I get I get bogged down in it. I grumble. I complain. The Lord says every time, I believe He's telling us when that happens, just turn it over to Him. If you feel like you're fixing to complain, drop about something. The Lord's been teaching me that here lately. And I start growing and dropping about something just to say, oh Jesus, help me. And whenever Satan comes to me, I've learned lately, Leon, I've learned lately, when Satan comes to me with a temptation, when something comes in my mind or some evil thought or something else comes in my life, I just turn to the Lord and say, Lord, I turn it over to you. Help me. Deliver me, Jesus, from this. Amen. Amen. I used to say, I'm rebuked to you, devil. Get out of here. Uh, I believe the most correct thing to do is to learn to the Lord. Say, Jesus, yeah. deliver me. Amen. Amen. And you know what? It works. It works a whole lot better that way. I found, I found that it works a whole lot better. That evil, that old father, every day comes around, it's gone like that, man. It's just gone like that because I trust him. He said, "Lord, if you trust me," he says, "I can do it." When you can't do it, I can do it. Amen. Right. He said, "Oh, this thing really bothered me. It's troubling me. Turn over to Jesus. Say, Jesus, deliver me. Save me, Jesus." Amen. 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 He will. Yes, he will. When I just, it's not empty words, this is real. When I tell my wife I love her, it's not just empty words. Hope she doesn't believe that it is. I know she doesn't. 
when she tells me that she loves me, I know that it's not just words. Amen. It's reality. Amen. If we can be that way among ourselves as human beings, how much more the Father is that Amen. If we, being evil, know how to give good gifts to our children, yeah. how much more our Heavenly Father give good things. One place is to give the Holy Spirit to them that ask. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. These are not just empty words of reality. I came to you, Paul said, not with empty, vain words of men, just to win you over. I didn't come here to impress you. I didn't come here just to please man. When I got to preach the Word of God, I don't want to get up here and preach just to please somebody. I don't want to say something to make sure. Oh, did so-and-so, Brother so-and-so, did he hear what I said? I don't want that. I better not say that because he may not like it. I better not say this or that or that. Can't be that way. we got to say what God gives us. Amen. Speak the Word of God. And the Word of God will bring fruit. The Word of God will hold fast. Yes, the Word of God will, like a seed, be planted and it will bring forth in somebody's life. Yes. It will bring happiness. It will bring joy. It will bring peace. It will bring faith. It will bring encouragement. It will do something. People are not going to just sit there and say, oh. yeah. But when the Word of God by the Holy Spirit comes, like in the Thessalonians, Man, when they heard Paul preach, can you imagine that Bill up there, Paul preaching? I don't know how he preached. I don't know if Paul was like a crazy man like I am, I preaching, and he just got up here and talk like a you know, real suave, sophisticated fellow, which is okay. But there's one thing about it. Whenever he stood up and preached, whenever he stood up and gave his sermon, brother, it wasn't his own words. He didn't, he didn't draw from his own strength. He didn't draw from his own knowledge and his own education. He depended solely and completely upon the Spirit of the living God that brought forth the Word out of his mouth. Amen. 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 Because he knew that's the key. That's the secret. That's what the world needs to hear. God didn't send me out here to the, to the world to preach me or to preach anything I know. He sent me to preach the Word of the living God. Amen. Amen. Because he's the only one that can save the world. It is the word of Christ that's going to crack this thing open and bring salvation to the whole world. Hallelujah. Amen. That's exactly right. He ventured out into the unknown world. Yeah. Unafraid. Lord. Hallelujah. Bold as a lion. Jesus Christ is Lord of Lord and King of Kings. That's right. Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, has come down and died for you and rose again. Right. Believe on Him. Amen. And you will be saved. That's right. He was bold about it. Why was He so bold? Because it was so sweet. It was so good. It was so real. I love to see a person get up and stand up when you hear them talk. That when they're talking is so real. They're not coming from some dead, dead end street. They're coming from a from a lively place somewhere in there. Their, their, their address is not dead end street. Their address is somewhere alive with Jesus. Praise God. Jesus is living in their heart, and what they have to say is alive with power and power. Amen. That's what the world needs. Let me hear what you got to say or I got to say. What's the Lord got to say? What's the Lord stirring in us to say? Preachers today mean well. They have a lot of good things to say, man. But we just don't need to hear empty preachers with empty heads and empty hearts. Empty words. We need preachers that are full of the Spirit of God. Full of the presence of God. Full of the genuine goodness of God. Amen. Because out of their mouth will proceed the same thing that's been implanted in their spirits. Right. Whatever is implanted in us is what comes forth. Right. Jesus said you'll know the tree by the fruit it bears. Amen. Right. If we have the goodness in us, that goodness has got to come out. Yes. Amen. Right. If there's love in there, like David Coulter used to say, when you squeeze him, that his love just oozes out. That's right. Come on. I could go on and on. 
He says, you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost comes, He gives joy. When the Spirit of God comes, listen, when the Spirit of God comes and He's real and He's present, and He enters into the lives and hearts of men, no matter how dark they are, right. no matter how ignorant they may be, no matter where they are in this life, when the presence and the Spirit of the living God comes into their life and into their heart, it will bring joy! Yes. Yes. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. It will cause them to have something they can't explain, but they know that it's real. Hallelujah. Amen. Why do you believe what you believe? Because I know it's true. Amen. Why do you act the way that you act the way you do? Because I have something real and genuine inside of me. Amen. Whenever you, whenever you see people in church shouting and dancing and praising the Lord, you know like Pentecostals do. People say, well, you shouldn't act that way and get in the flesh. You're not supposed to get in the flesh, you know. You're not supposed to get in the flesh. <laughs> well, what do you think you're doing when you're sitting in the bench if you're not in the flesh? That's right. <laughs> I guess you think it was sitting in the bench, you're in the spirit. <laughs> the guy that's in the floor, he's in the flesh too. So are you sitting in the bench. Amen. Well, what's happening? I'll tell you what's happening. It's not that I'm in the flesh. It's just that inside of my spirit, something moving around and my body just got to give somehow. It just got to move it around when it starts moving inside of me. Amen. <laughs> you got nothing to do with the flesh. It's just what you see. But you can't see what's happening inside. Woo, glory to God. Nobody can see what's going on in there. But man, something wonderful's happening inside. Amen. Amen. And I just got to, you know, we just got to let it out sometimes. We may, we may look like a fool, but we got to let it out. Amen. We got to let it go, praise God. Because, you know, it's a reaction. Amen. Glory to God. It's a combustible reaction. <laughs> when, when gasoline set on fire, if the vapors of that gas are set on fire with a spark, there's a combustible reaction. Amen. What happens? Motor just starts going right <laughs> That's what happens in our body when the Holy Spirit just starts moving in a certain way. We just have a reaction to it. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Thessalonians. Oh, the same way. Glory to God. Joy. Joy of the Holy Spirit. We're talking about real genuine joy here. Not a Pentecostal joy, not a Baptist joy, Presbyterian or Methodist or any other kind of brand you want to put on it. But joy Amen. of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. However you react, it's okay with God. Amen. If you want to weep, if you want to shout, you want to just sit still and be just real calm and at peace. Sometimes I'm that way. Sometimes I feel that way. I just feel peaceful. You ever feel that way? Just oh, you don't, you don't want to move. You don't want to. He just sitting there. You just <laughs> it's like he, it's like he just floating along, peaceful, peaceful waves, and a gentle breeze is carrying you along. Yeah, he just floating along. Peace. It's peace. And it's joyous. It's a joy beyond compare, beyond words, beyond explanation. But it happens. Hey, God knows. God knows it happens. Because He makes it happen. God knows it's what we need and what we all need. Hallelujah. Let me read a few more words I'll let you go. It's almost one o'clock. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing 
to have imparted to you not the gospel of God only, but also our own self. I read this and it kind of clicked. It, it really it, it stirred my spirit. He says, we were not only willing to impart to you the gospel of God, but we were also willing to impart our own souls. Did you know that's what happens when Christ comes into your life? When there's a when there is a we have the same spirit. Yeah, same man. We're born of the same spirit. We can just look at each other and know we have the same Jesus, the same joy, the same peace, the same God, the same experience, the same. And, and you know what? It makes us want to be joined together. Amen. It makes us glad to come together and say, man, I'm willing to give my soul to You. I'm willing to share my heart with You. Can you imagine heaven? Heaven's going to be the same way. Heaven is a place of sharing. Sharing the same experience. Sharing the same glory. Sharing the same everything. It's all going to be in everybody at one time. And everybody's going to know what's going on because it's going on in everybody. That's right. Amen. All you got to do in heaven is look at somebody and say, Hallelujah! And everybody says, Hallelujah! Yes. Amen. You don't have to say, Well, what are you shouting Hallelujah for? They know why. Right. Well, you get to see Jesus. You get to say, Oh, Lord, oh my God, praise your whole thing and fall down on their knees. Everybody's going to fall on their knees. Because everybody's sharing the same experience. It's real for everyone. Amen. And that's the way that it is in the church. It should be in the church. I believe every church, every gathering of a church anywhere should be that way. We should all be uh, sharing with one another. Amen. Giving our hearts, giving our souls to each other. Amen. Enjoying. Because when I look into your eyes, I know that you're enjoying the same thing that I. I know that you know the same. You know something that we both know something, and that somebody else may not know. Ain't that right? We know something. Maybe somebody don't know, but we know, don't we? Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Every one of us. When we look into those eyes. See something in there? Yeah, I see something in there, Tim. Something that looks just like me. I see something in there that's just like what I got inside me. I see it in there. When I look at Leon, my brother, I say, boy, hey, man, I don't have to, you know, it's there. I guess you, don't, you don't have to question it. It's there. Amen. That's right. Amen. Slam with Brother Bill and Bill back there. Bill and Bill. <laughs> my dear brother Gary. My dear brother Gary. Man, I since I met this guy, just fell in love with him the first moment of the I don't know, he fell in love with him. He's my brother. Why? I'm sharing my heart and my soul. Amen. That's why we should be with each other. That's right. All of us. It's the Spirit of the Lord. It's the goodness of unity. It's all, how do I say it? We're all tapped into the same source. Yeah. yeah. We're all drinking from the same from the same water. Amen. Well, ain't that good? It's like being out in the desert and everybody comes up and finds this water hole and they're just all, where are they at? Their heads down in water. <laughs> it's like in that water down and they're lifting up each other. We don't have to say anything. Just look at each other. <laughs> just look at each other. Don't have to say a word. Just look at each other and grin. Be down there, get down there and get some more of it. <laughs> Because we're all partaking of the same thing. Amen. It's good. It? Amen. And sometimes we just want to let it go. Sometimes we just want to let our emotions and our feelings, we want to let them out. You know, we want to hold them in. We want to let them out. Hold them in. Hold them out. And I'm the same way. We're all, you know, we're all hold them out. But you know, when it really gets down in there, we didn't have an outlet. Yeah. You know, when I get up and preach, that's my outlet. <laughs> when I preach, that's, that's really my biggest outlet when I'm preaching. No, I can just let it all hang out, right, Bill? I can just let it all hang out. <laughs> Paul was the same way. However it was he acted, and however it was his personality was, he was endued, inspired, filled to overflowing. Amen. 
he led with all hands when he began to preach to me. However it was he did, he did it with joy and gladness and by the Spirit of God. And it brought power and life, reality, and faith, Amen. and hope, yes. and all of these things. Life-changing force. Yes. Hallelujah. He says, you remember us, and we remember you. Because when you received the Word of God, when you embraced it, you did not receive it as it's the Word of men. When you heard it, you received it not as the Word of men, but as it is in truth the Word of God. Amen. Which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Amen. Do you believe this morning? Yes. Stand to your feet if you believe. Let us not be concerned, therefore, about some futuristic thing. We're looking for Jesus. Yes. He's coming by. And really, that's one of the things that we diligently hope for. It's one of the things that is one of the engines that keeps us going. For Christ is truth. And if He said He was coming back, He's coming back. Yes, He is. And if I believe, and I have joy in Him, yes. I believe what He said. Amen. He's coming back. That's right. They were concerned about it. The Thessalonians were concerned about it. Is the Lord coming soon? And what's going to happen? Paul had to write and tell them, don't be disturbed. Don't be upset as by letter from us or some other spirit comes in and somebody else teaches you something else. Don't worry about it. I'll tell you, and He began to tell them about the coming of the Lord. The Lord is coming. And these things must happen first. But He's coming. Comfort one another. When He does come, no one's going to be left behind. No one's just died and gone on that I'm going to be left. Don't be concerned about that. Paul says they're going to raise up to. God's going to split them graves open. They're going to come out of there. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And all of us are going to rise to meet Jesus in the air in the clouds. If I believe and have joy of Jesus, I believe what He said. That's right. And that's, that's the very thing that gives us life. We rejoice in Him. He is our everything. Let's sing that. He is my everything. He is my Christianity. Jesus Christ. That's right. It isn't words of men. It isn't a philosophy. It isn't a religion. It isn't anything that man of this world thinks it is. Christianity is one word. Two words. Jesus Christ. That's what it is. Let us be concerned about that right here and right now. Somebody says, right now. Right now. Jesus is Lord of my life right now. Jesus is real right now. He's real in my heart right now. Hallelujah. He's building a fire in me right now. The Holy Ghost is real in me right now. Hallelujah. I don't have to wait for it to come. He's here right now. And when the Lord is present, He can do anything. Worried about healing and miracles, don't worry about it. When the Lord is present, He'll build your faith and build you up so much. You'll say you'll begin to walk on water. My God, that was walk walking on water. Ain't nothing more. Let's draw near to Him. He'll draw near to us. Father, this morning I thank You. 
for the word of life. Folks, you are real. You are the true and living.